Ladies and gents, this is Season 1 of Diablo 4, also known as Season of the Malignant. It starts on July 20th, so just a couple more weeks, and it actually introduces a lot of very interesting new mechanics, new legendary powers, legendary gear, and tons of really awesome changes that you're going to definitely enjoy. We have a big live stream breakdown right now with all the details about it and some of the upcoming patches, so let's dive right into it. Now we're going to jump into the mechanics in just a little bit, but in the meantime, Season 1 takes place after the events of Diablo 4's main campaign, so after you have finished the main story, you can jump right into this and just follow the new self-contained side story that takes place in Season 1. This is going to introduce new characters, a new story to follow, but also a brand new threat. That's of the malignance, a corruption that begins to spread all over Sanctuary and pretty much affect all the creatures and, well, even people living inside of it. This is going to further provide us new incentives to go out there and clear this out, fight tougher enemies, but also gain some sweet new rewards on top. This is going to be one of the main characters we're going to interact throughout Season 1. His name is Cormand, and this is also going to serve as our main way to learn about some of these mechanics and even interact with them. So let's talk about these mechanics starting with the Malignants. This is the major one and anytime we encounter an elite monster during Season 1, there's a chance that that monster will spawn as a Malignant version instead. This will make it look slightly different, glow a different color, but also gain completely new powers, which is also going to make it a lot tougher to defeat. And we're going to want to defeat these enemies because they drop a new resource called Malignant Hearts. And with these is what we're going to use to basically gain new powerful legendary abilities that we can socket onto the gear. So interacting with this heart is something that we're going to want to do, and we're going to do that by using something called a Cage of Binding. This is now going to start a ritual that pulls all the malignants inside and spawns an even more powerful version of the malignant creature that we just defeated. But once we defeated that as well, this is going to now drop a caged heart. And this is essentially what we're looking for. So let's talk about the caged hearts and what they do. So think of these sort of like the gems we already have, as in they can be socketed onto special gear, in this case on the jewelry that will get affected by the seasonal one malignants. So they only go onto the jewelry, but they also provide some very strong new powers on the same level, if not even exceeding that of the legendary aspects. For example, we have a couple over here, including this one, which on Critical Strike, it electrically charges the enemies, causing lightning to arch between them. But of course, this is just a low-level variant, there are much stronger ones coming in as you level up and go up in the world tier. There are 32 new malignant powers in total in Season 1, all providing legendary-like abilities, and they also fall into different categories. We've seen a few, for example, Vicious with the color red, Brutal with the color blue, Wrathful white, and so on. So you have to match the type of malignant heart that you get as a drop with the socket of the ring or the amulet that you place it on. There are three types of sockets that these gear pieces can have, but there are four different types of malignant hearts that can drop in Season 1. Of course, the fourth malignant heart type that we haven't seen yet is a much more rare variant, a much stronger one than the rest, but also one that can fit into any socket type. This is something that you should be familiar with if you played previous Diablo games or even if you played World of Warcraft. Now let's talk about the colored sockets for a little bit because there might be a bit of confusion about them. The long story short is that malignant hearts can only be placed on jewelry, so either rings or amulet, and during the season 1 event all the jewelry will now start spawning with a malignant socket instead of its regular one. So this is only for season 1 as all the jewelry gets infested by the malignants, so they have these new sockets instead. This also, by the way, means that if you get a jewel that doesn't have any socket, but you go and add one at the jeweler, this is now also going to turn up into an infested socket of a different color. So it can be RNG, either red, blue, white, and so on. And this also means that a certain item can spawn with different socket colors. So let's say you drop the same ring to twice, it can actually spawn with different colored socket types, not just the same one. This is going to add another layer of RNG, but don't worry, there are going to be some targeted farms that we're going to talk about in just a little bit. 
But before we go into all of that, what you need to know next is that you can break down any of the low level malignant hearts that you might not be using or if they become obsolete. There's going to be a certain crafting mat that we get out of it, pretty much kind of like how the sigils work right now in the game. And this is going to let us craft other malignant items to use in that targeted farm. So let's talk about the targeted farm, which is going to bring us to invokers. So in season one and game, this is one of the main things we're going to want to craft with some of the resources we get from breaking down the hearts that we don't need. These invokers are going to be used in a special type of new dungeon called Malignant Tunnels and specifically at the end of it to target farm specific hearts. In this case, Malignant Tunnels are places across the world where the malignants manifest these new types of dungeons where we can find more malignant monsters but at the end of them also one of these malignant outgrowths. This is going to be the specific spot we want to bring our invokers into so that we can spawn a specific malignant enemy of the color associated with the heart that we're trying to find. So for example in this case we can see that the player has a choice to go either for the brutal outgrowth which is going to give it a blue socket heart or a wrathful one or white socket instead with the invoker that this character has. So you're going to be able to choose the one that you're going to want the most for your current build or character. But this is also going to spawn a malignant monster of that color that you choose, which if you defeat will also drop the heart with the color associated with it. Unlike the malignant monsters you find randomly in the wild, which require that second defeat or second ritual to complete in order to get the caged heart, this one does not. Once you defeat it just the first time, it's already going to drop the heart that you need. And not only that, but some of the strongest hearts in Season 1 are given from these invoker encounters. In any case, with that out of the way, let's talk about some of the new stuff coming in the game. There's obviously not just these, but plenty more. There's going to be a new story boss, there's going to be a more self-contained side story to follow here, a main campaign of Season 1 if you want to, new legendary items, legendary powers, and even new unique items. And by the way, for the new legendary items, powers, and unique items, these will also show up in the Eternal Realm, so you can actually go ahead and hunt for them on the existing characters that you have right now without ever having to step into Season 1. You're still going to want to do that though because there are some exclusive rewards associated with Season 1 and this is going to bring us to the Journey feature. So the next one we're going to talk about is the Journey feature. This is also going to give you access to the Battle Pass of the Season 1 and pretty much all the challenge tracks, all the rewards, all the cosmetics are going to be right here in this screen. So everybody can access the battle pass of the seasonal realm, even if you don't pay for it, because there is both a free and a premium version. The only thing that separates them is the fact that the premium version gives you access to better looking cosmetics, but that's it, you're not gaining any other advantage on top. But in terms of the seasonal journey, there are going to be 7 chapters in total, each with different objectives that we need to complete. As we complete these chapters and complete these objectives, we gain favors that we can then funnel into the battle pass, which in turn unlocks new rewards as we level through it. This also is the main way we're going to gain access to some of the new legendary aspects that are also going to be permanently unlocked in our Codex of Power. For example, in the case of completing just chapter 1, as you can see, it already gives us access to like a handful of additional legendary aspects and also additional caches of loot and even like greater favors that we can then further unlock battle pass rewards with, so it totally helps to complete these objectives as you go through them. Speaking of the objectives, you can see that the minimum requirement for chapter 1 is 9 objectives completed but there's going to be an access of objectives that we complete. This means that you don't have to go for the ones that you don't like and you can totally skip objectives that you don't want to take part in. Like for example, if there's any related to PvP and you don't really want to play PvP. You also don't need to complete them sequentially, you can skip over them and go for ones that may be at the bottom or at the middle. Wherever they are located, you can just go straight away without being conditioned in completing the ones that come before them. 
but gaining that favor by completing these objectives and leveling through the chapters is also going to level you through the battle pass and as i've said you will gain progressively better new rewards as you move through it now obviously for some of the better looking armors and cosmetics here you're going to need the premium battle pass so you will need to pay for that or have the deluxe edition for the first season which already gives you access to the premium version of the battle pass but this is going to provide cosmetics that, in the case of the armors, can be unlocked and applied as transmogs to all of the classes in the game. There's also weapon variants of transmogs, but in that case, they are class-specific for obvious reasons, as each class uses different weapons most of the time. One of the other resources that we get by progressing in the free battle pass is also the smoldering ashes. So this is something that everybody gets access to, you don't have to pay for it. But as you get these smoldering ashes by progressing in the seasonal battle pass, you can also unlock seasonal blessings. These can provide very useful buffs for your seasonal characters, such as increasing the XP that you get from monsters, increasing the duration of elixirs, even boosting the amount of gold that you get, or boosting the chance to get rare mats from salvaging, all the way to boosting the chance of getting powerful, in this case, malignant hearts to drop, which is going to be one of the most important. So obviously, this is something that you're going to want to progress through, as it's going to make leveling characters in that seasonal event a lot easier as a result this by the way won't immediately be available to low level seasonal characters but you have to meet a minimum level requirement so just to get the xp bonus for example right here at the start you need your character to be level 40 in season 1 and obviously for the rest you need to go higher and higher in levels all the way up to maybe like 50 60 70 80 before you can reach the maximum in any case, there are going to be 27 free tiers that you can gain from the battle pass. So 27 of those smoldering ashes that you can get for free. And then you can just place them in these and gain the benefits out of them. This brings us to the final point I want to discuss and a major one because Blizzard just did the entire fan base a huge favor. Essentially, if you now create an alt after season one starts, Pretty much all your renown, all your altars, even the fog of war that you discovered on your like best character will transfer to all your existing characters, both in the permanent realm as well as in the seasonal realm. So let's say you have your first character, your main, you completed most of the renown out there, you even like unlocked most of the map, cleared out the fog of war and got everything, but you did not want to do this same thing again on any of your other alts. Well, you no longer have to worry about that because that's no longer going to be the case starting with the season one. Essentially, after that begins, you're going to be able to just log in onto your main character with the most amount of completion. And as soon as you do that, all of that completion will propagate on your entire account so that all of that will transfer to all of your other characters, current and future seasonal or permanent and on top of that, even if you have a split farm, for example, let's say a character has a certain part of the map or of the renown discovered and another one, a different one, you can just log on both of them and propagate both of those progressions on your entire account as if you did it with only one. So I think that this is the best approach that Blizzard just took and it's only the start of it. We of course have lots more to talk about, there's a brand new patch incoming, 1.04, not as big as 1.03, but we'll still address a number of really big issues and also buff the number of legendary and unique items that we get from certain events. But this is it for now, let me know down below what you think, in the meantime, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.